Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to go take some cuttings and we're gonna propagate some common lilac. I have all the stuff that I need right here and right there. But for now, all I need is my shears. I just sharpened it a little while ago. So we'll take the shears and go get some cuttings. If you're new to the channel, this is kind of my daily routine. Oops. Well, not throwing the ball real bad like that, but I have to throw the ball for Izzy, the Border Collie, the entire day if she's out with me. All right, I have a common lilac right there. I have several along the road. And I got a bunch of them over by the shed. Just trying to figure out which one would be easiest to get the samples from. I think the one by the shed. Let's get over there. Hello, horses. Wow, you guys made a total mess out of that hay bale. They had a round bale put there. That was probably only three days ago, maybe four. But they just completely tore it apart and they've been laying in it. Yeah, what are you going to do when you don't have any more food? Frankie is our little baby horse. Okay. Well, got plenty of snow here. I like to collect my prunings in late winter like this. Today is March 4th. Still got a good deal of snow on the ground, but lilacs will be blooming in maybe a month maybe a little bit longer than that and that's about how long it's going to take them to root so they will be blooming at about the same time they normally would and what i'm looking for is this is a, a real good example i want it to be about a quarter inch where last year's wood meets the two-year-old wood so this would be a perfect one this is a little on the narrow side. That looks like two-year-old wood right there. I'll leave that alone. So this one right here looks really awesome. This one right here, not quite as awesome, but I'll take that as well. And what I want to do is make my cutting right about where it joins the two-year-old wood. There's more hormones in the wood right there, and you'll have a lot better chance of it shooting out roots if you cut it right here. And then we'll get rid of this tip on here. That's going to be a flower, and we really don't want it flowering. But I'll show you all that stuff later. For now, let's just get some cuttings. All right. I have problems getting this camera aimed right. So hopefully I'm doing this right. Take one cutting right there. And get this one here. There's not a lot of good stuff here. The thicker the better. I want it about a quarter inch, but I can take some smaller ones if need be. I believe all of them are gonna sprout some roots. Okay, I think I'm gonna go to that other one over there and see what I can get from that. Okay, this tree is just loaded with them. Again, hopefully I'm aimed correctly. Now you can see how long this is. I'm gonna cut this back to six, 10 inches, so. That'll be just fine. The only thing I'm worried about is how thick they are right where they connect with the older wood. And I want it to be right around pencil thickness. Yeah, there's plenty on this one. A lot of these joints have two coming off of it and that's from previous cuttings. All right, I need two more. I'm going to do eight cuttings this year. Ha! 
I sure hope my camera is catching all this. Let me see. I think I'm in focus, but I'm cutting it right above the joint. And that should do it. I have eight of them here. Okay, back in the greenhouse. Now I'm going to get these cut to size and soak them for about two hours and then we'll get them dipped and put into pots. Alright, this is the only pot I could find that's deep enough. It's a reused one from last year. I did clean it out and sanitize it. I don't want any spores or anything to uh, contaminate the mixture. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get all of the bottoms, I'm going to get a nice fresh cut about a half inch below the lowest bud. Let's see if I can show you that. And I'm going to make a nice straight cut on those. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes I end up cutting right through a bud when I'm getting these off the bush. And I want to make sure that I have a full bud at the bottom. Alright, now what I got to do, take one of these longer ones. I want to have... A couple buds above the surface so on this one I'll be cutting and I want to do a slight angle cut I don't want water collecting on the top there I definitely don't want any of these buds at the very tip that's gonna be a flower I want these little buds here that are gonna turn into leaves so now that I have one like that I can use that as a guide and cut all my other ones. Again, I angle cut it so it doesn't have a drop of water sitting on the tip. Now, a bit of water for rehydration. I did some burr oaks yesterday, so I have everything out here. This is probably not the best container for rehydration. Let me find something bigger. This was big enough for the burr oaks, but I'll only be able to get the bottoms in this. Let me find something else. Okay, this should work. Get this filled with water. And this is nice fresh well water. If you got uh, city water, you might want to let it sit a while. But then again, I don't know. The fluoride and the chlorine in the water, I don't know if that's going to help at all. I would probably let it sit a while. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for about two hours. Then we're going to scar the ends and dip them in the dip and grow, and then we'll get them potted. All right, almost forgot about this. I'm gonna mix up some wilt stop, and how you do that, you cannot add this to a bottle and then pour water in it. You have to do it the other way around. So what I do is fill the bottle about halfway with hot water, and this is a quart bottle. So these are the instructions for a quart. For a quart you want 27 ounces of water and 5 ounces of wilt stop. So like I said I filled it halfway with hot water 
real nice and hot water and I'm going to fill this with five ounces of wilt stop. Let me see if I can get that in the camera correctly. About five ounces there. And I'll pour that in. Camp on. Shake it very well. Then I'm going to fill it up to the top with water. I'm going to let it settle for a while first, but that's how you got to do it. You can do it without the hot water, but that makes it emulsify better. So you get this stuff into solution. The ingredient in this wilt stop, I believe it's called pinene. I think it's made from pine needles, but not 100% sure. Okay, so I'm going to let this settle for the next two hours, along with my soaking cuttings, and we'll get back and finish this up. Okay, it's been about two hours. Oh, look. We have a cat sleeping with us. And this has gotten like a little ring there, but that's okay. So I'm just going to add water up to about right there. And then put the lid on that and shake it up some more. And I need to make up some of this. This, you fill, there's a little line down at the bottom. That's how much of this you put in there. And then it has one, two, three, four different lines that you can fill it to, depending on what you're rooting. I am going to go with the 10 times dilution. Um, five times is for hardwoods. This is for a semi-hardwood. And then as you go up, those are for green cuttings. So let's get this mixed up, get that done, and we're ready to do the next step on the cuttings. That should be good. Now we'll get this filled up. This is the only water I have out here, a big two and a half gallon thing, so it's kind of difficult pouring. That should be good. I did some research on the ingredient in wilt stop pining, and it appears in nature in just tons of plants, including pine, but also cannabis. Go figure. Okay, these should be nice and hydrated now. Now I need to get this filled. I'm going to fill it real close to the top with my potting mixture, which is 50% perlite and 50% peat moss, and it has a little bit of time release fertilizer in it. Let me get that filled up and I will be right back. This stuff is real nice and wet. We do not want our cuttings to dry out. Okay, now, oh, I need my knife. Okay, went and got my knife, got it cleaned. Don't want to introduce any pathogens. And what I'm going to do is just barely take a sliver off of here. Just like that. And then I'm going to dip it for five seconds. All right, and then just poke it right into the pot. 
I got two sets of buds above the surface. Um, with different plants, you might want three, and I'll describe that a little bit later. We'll get all the rest of these in here, and I'll talk about that a little bit. All right, generally speaking, we want about two-thirds of this underground and a third showing. And some plants have like alternate buds. They have one here, then one here, then one here. With the lilacs, they're paired, so you can get a pretty big space between the buds. So sometimes I'll just leave the two buds above the surface, sometimes four. It all depends. I just want to keep about two-thirds under the surface. You want a good deal under the surface so that it doesn't dry out. And then the top part we're also going to be spraying with wilt stop to keep the moisture in it. Now when you're making these scrapings, you can see there's a bud there and a bud there. I want to go in between the two buds and do, you know, half inch to three quarters of an inch. It could be bigger than that as well. And you just want to expose the green, that's the cambium. And a five second dip. And then we're going to shove it into the pot. Some of these need to be trimmed again. All right. What I'm going to do now is water this really well to get everything settled in. Then I'm going to trim the tops on a few of these and then we'll spray it with some wilt stop. I'm just going to use the water that I had these soaking in and just kind of flood the pot. The excess will all run out the bottom, but what that's going to do is get everything nice and tight around the roots. Or not the roots, but where the roots will be at some point. Okay, it's running out the bottom. Now I'm going to prune these one last time. All right, on this one we got a set of buds right at ground level, so I'm just going to come up above two buds. This has one set of buds. This is a real short one, so that's as good as I'm going to do that one. That one has two sets. Two sets right here. Well, this one only has one, but I'll take off this extra up here. And two sets right here. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of paper towel in between some of these so that the entire surface doesn't get covered with the pinene, the wilt stop, and then I'll spray the wilt stop on these. Actually that should be good enough. I just want to make sure that the entire surface doesn't get covered with wilt stop so that water can still get into the roots, but I really don't care if it gets on the rest. I'm going to put this on the ground and we'll get it sprayed. All right, that should do it. Get that out of there. Now I'm going to put a saucer under this and put it in a windowsill. I am not going to cover it with anything. If you do that on these hardwood cuttings, it's just going to cause mold and it's going to kill them. So I'll have to watch them and spritz them once in a while if they start getting too dried out. But the wilt stop should stop that. So just put a saucer under it, get it in a windowsill, and hopefully within a month you should have leaves coming out 
and root starting. Okay, that's going to wrap this video up. I will make a follow-up video on this once these start leafing out and getting roots. I'll take these out of this pot and I'll pot each one in their own separate pot and then we'll let them grow for a while and then we'll put them in the ground and I'll have update videos on all of that. So make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.